They're good for four things. Smoke, make noise, sling oil, and make grown people stand out and watch them run. What's this one used for? Uh, it's a two horsepower international and they just, a farmer might have one engine but he'd use it on a corn sheller, a grist mill, water pump, you know, it's used it on several different implements. But I don't know particularly what that one is used for. What's the uh, tank and... That's the radiator. The radiator? Yeah, it pumps water up through the engine and back over the... Uh, screen to cool it. Okay, so that's the radio. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that, that's what I had to ask. I didn't know. <laughs> cool. That's nice. Did you restore it? No, I didn't. I just half bought it a couple months ago. Okay. won an award that must be a proud day for you <laughs> so where are you from Edouard. Edouard? okay what what's it about what's uh this engine about what what's a one-third scale model of a five horse galloway uh that gentleman in pennsylvania richard shelley scaled down the patterns and forward casting and he would sell a set of castings and drawings, and I just, I built it from that. So you built this? Yes, sir. Oh my goodness. So you built it from this, uh, is this it? Well, this is just a uh, view of this Sterling engine fan. Okay. So how do you, are they, how, how did you come up with the parts? I mean, does this have to be custom made or? Well, the the castings, uh, like I said, I bought, bought castings. Okay, so they sell a kit then? Yes, they sell a kit of the castings and that's what you start with. And a lot of the other parts are just made from bar stock that okay. you buy at a metal supply. Cool, how long did it take you to make it? I didn't keep an accurate record, but about seven to eight hundred hours probably. Oh, wow. That's big, that's nice. So what's it running on? What, is it running on a gas or? Gasoline. Gas? Yeah. And, and where did the gas go here? This is the gas tank. This is the this, gas tank. This is the water hopper. They just fill that up with water and it surrounded the cylinder to provide cooling for the engine. So well, that's kind of the radiator, I guess. Then. Essentially. So it's uh, turning, you got it turning on a, a display that I guess you built too, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, good job. Is this yours over here? Yes. What, what is this? Uh, it's a Ford power cutter. Uh, Forest Ford has the patent on it. It's not associated with Ford Motor Company. Uh, he got the patent on it in 1949, and this one is about a 52 or 53 model. Well, they want me to cut grass? Yes, it's a mower and hedge trimmer. You can lock it in this position and trim hedges. Oh, okay. If you're brave. If you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 
So have you trimmed any hedges with it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like it probably still runs, huh? It does. Great. Right. Well, how, how long have you had this piece? Uh, about 35 years, I guess. 35 years, yeah. Mm. Tell me the year on it again, what year? Uh, the, the, the only way I know the date is the serial number on the engine, and it dates around 52 or 53. Mm. That would have been kind of an industrial lawnmower, I guess, uh, mm. heavy duty. It is. And it, That's one of the first walk-behinds, I guess, what you see now. Yeah, like, no. and it, it's self-propelled, too. Self-propelled, okay. Yeah, so that that's one of the very first generations of the walk behind that we see uh, to me that's what it looks I, like i would guess <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> thanks for your time appreciate you Thank coming How many of them do you have now? I've got just right here what I've got. These are out here? Yeah. Okay. I've now got that, that's a replica, of course. He's the teacher right there. He's got the he is over there. And he's taught me how to build these. So you built them with was those like kits you could buy or no, no, you just that's Home Depot special. Home Depot special. You look down here at that end where the gas tank is, and that's all plumbing parts. Henry Ford built this engine with Thomas Edison in a steam shop in uh, where they worked. And at that particular time, in 1893, gasoline was a byproduct. So he was one, and steam power and kerosene was quite, uh, steam especially was quite uh, involved because you had to be licensed and all that other stuff. So he built this engine, which is made out of plumbing parts. That's a, uh, just like your water faucet on the outside of your house. That's a cutoff valve. I've modified it and drilled straight through it and put a rod, a rod in it so I could put a valve on it inside here that it went down against the seat. This is a just a nipple and a plug and a T valve and a flange and another plug. And this is a swing check valve with a real light spring in behind it to help it shut. And an elbow, and these are just plain steel rods, and that's a steel rod. And I built this out of half inch steel to mount, and I did buy the gears because I don't have an indexing head to, to make my gears with. But uh, the rest of it I made. And it's, his originally was a probe that went down through here in a spring that was on the top of the piston that hit that probe and made a spark. So that's the reason why they said it was a, a kitchen sink engine. He took it home and set it on his wife's kitchen sink and then uh, hooked it up to the light socket on the positive side and the water pipe on the, on the, on the negative side. I'm firing it with a Model T coil and a little 6 volt battery. And when you open this up, it lets the gas drain it down in here, and then I'll flip it over. This is a Singer sewing machine wheel. engine in your car. It's a four-stroke engine. It's intake, compression, fire, power stroke, exhaust.
So you explain about the kitchen sink part again. Well, the, the only flat place that he had in his house was the kitchen sink. Okay. So he just set it down on top of it. So he could hook it up to the light bulb okay. and the cold water pipe. All right. And if you hang on just a second, I'll show you something. This is what's in here. There's a spring and a set screw, and I made a valve to go down against that seat. Now, with the original one, it had a spring on the top of it to where it would go up, and that's the insulated probe that goes down through there. And if it, when it went up, it hit that and sparked. And that's what his ignition was. So what'd you build your uh, cylinder out of there? A piece of cast iron sl uh, uh, slug, just like that. Okay. And I cut rings in it, uh, ring grooves in it, and the rings are out of a, some sort of an air conditioning system that you can get, and they're exactly the same size. That's just seamless chrome molly steel, the same steel that they use in the roll bars and race cars. And now, did he put this in production and sell it? This no, no, no. That was sold to the no, public? No, it never was. The original one's sitting in Dearborn, Michigan in the Ford Museum. Okay. And then, see, there's my piston right there. But you can see, you can see, let's see, where am I? Okay, here's, here's compression. And then it fires right there, because it fires right here at this tail. And then there's your power stroke. That's number two stroke. Now watch this rod. This rod opens, that's your exhaust. Then it closes, and here's your intake stroke. And then it compresses. And then it fires. Four strokes. So I see you have some other engines. Did you build these also? No, I didn't, I didn't build this one. I'm in the process of building this one. Okay. And hopefully it will look something like his down there. Uh, but this is a cat, what they call a casting kit. And everything that you get, you just get pieces and you have to start working on it. And it's rough. Trust me, you can see by that, it's got a rough casting to it. But I've got, uh, I've probably got 300 hours in it so far milling everything down and building stuff. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is a, a engine that I bought off the internet at banggood.com. <coughs> it took me two months to get it to come out of China. But it's, uh, it runs on Coleman Lantern fuel. <laughs> and it doesn't get hot. <laughs> You hold on to the exhaust and it doesn't get hot. So it's got, it's got a tiny spark plug, huh? Yeah, real tiny spark plug right there. So what type of fuel you said? Coleman? Coleman Lantern fuel. Yeah. And I mix a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil in it. We used to do that in our airplanes when we had the old J3 Cubs and the, and the uh, Champions and the Champs. And, uh, they'd be bad about sticking valves because they had leaded gasoline. And we'd unstick the valves and add a quart of Marvel Mystery Oil to it. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to, but we did. <laughs> you was talking about this one that you first found over here. You can talk about that again in a minute? Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about it over here, by it. So you found this one in the mud hole. And like I said, I didn't know anything about them. And between YouTube and, and asking around and stuff, it, I finally figured out how to get it to run. So it, it does a pretty good job of running. See a pair of gloves laying up there? It's got a crank on it, but I I screwed it down to where it don't move. I'm scared of cranks. They're a good way to break your arm.
And if you get your camera over here, you can see the piston coming in and out of the So once you found this, how long was it before you actually could get it to fire? How long did it you have to work on it? took me about three months. Three months? Yeah. Yeah, but I had to find some parts. Yeah, I had fine parts. So uh, stuff like this, just being this old, I bet it's hard to find. You have to have them made or? No, uh, I haven't made anything for it. I happened to be able to find the parts that I needed off the internet and eBay and just different contacts. So this would have been used around a, a commercial site, farms, or different things? My grandfather had two of these. Okay. He had one down next to the creek. And he pumped water like that one's doing up to the barn lock for the, for the uh, stock. And then he had another one that was set on a wheelbarrow type thing like this one. And he would roll it around to the different stuff that he had. He had a small grist mill that he used for grinding. And then he had uh, a corn grinder and a corn sheller and uh, a swing saw and uh, something else. I forgot what else it was. But he would roll them around and hook it up with the, the pulleys. There's a pulley on the outside of this one. Just took whatever belt. Whatever belt he wanted to use. So what, what's the water? Is this cooling again? Just cooling. Cooling? That's all it does is cool. Now is this, is this your gas or what? No, that's oil. That's oil. No, the gas is underneath it. Okay. And it's got a ball check valve in it and the atmosphere, if you'll notice, on most of these old engines, they don't have a push rod for the intake valve. The atmospheric suction of that piston makes that valve operate. If you walk over here to look at this, this one, you can get a close-up to it right. right there. I can get it right here. It don't fire every time now. It'll just barely bite the fire. And that's sucking gas in when it does. So they, it looks like there was quite a few different manufacturers that made different engines. 2,500. 2,500 manufacturing, wow. So, I see you got one hooked up over here on a, uh, what's a corn? Yeah, uh, that's an old corn grinder. Corn grinder? Yeah. It's a Maytag wash machine motor. 1927. This one? Yeah. My grandmother had one on her wash machine. Oh, okay. 1927. Yeah. I can grind up fine enough for cornmeal, and if I put wheat in there, I can, by this adjustment, I can get it down where I'm grinding fine enough for uh, flour. Is, is this an original piece here? Yeah, this is 1910. 1910. It was an old hand crank, and I built all this to slow it down to where it wouldn't burn it up. So the old Maytag washing machines run on gasoline. They would had a gas-powered motor originally. Before sure did. Okay, so sure they would take that off and use it for different things around the farm? They could, yeah. And most of them did. Yeah. And when they wasn't washing clothes, they was out grinding corn or something. <laughs> something. <laughs> they made made use of everything, didn't they? So yeah. you remember, you said you remember your grandpa having some of these yeah, growing I up? Yeah, he had two of them. Was he still using them when he was a kid? Yeah. Yeah? Still was. Yeah. Well, see, uh, a little history on that. It was prior to 1930, None of your farmers had electricity. 
and so they use these engines that's the reason why the, they're not in the that they didn't take them up for the war is because they were vital for the farmers to produce other than that they would have been in the scrap heap for the war and uh, so in 1930 uh, the federal government came up with the REA Rural Electrification Association enough of you. Uh, they, they went to all the power companies and they told them, you know, you're going to provide power to your farmers. And uh, so Grandpa had power finally about 1940, I think. And he had uh, uh, four, li five light bulbs. He had four in the house and one in the outhouse. <laughs> that was it. He still used these machines up to mid-1950s whenever he sold the farm. Where was the farm at? Indiana. Indiana. Where are you from? I'm I'm actually from Kansas City, but I moved down here when I was 15 years old. What part? Kansas City. I mean, what part Marble. here? Marble. Marble. Okay. All right. Marble. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, what was your name now? Gary Wacker Hagen. Gary Wacker Hagen. Hagen. Wacker okay. Hagen. Well, Gary, it's been very informative uh, about the engines there. I always like documenting the stuff that you don't see no more. You Thank know. You. So, uh, Did I give you a card? No, here's another card, too. I'll give you an extra I, one. So, you, are you on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on uh, Facebook. You can see some of the stuff we do on there. I don't know when I'll get this posted, but... Uh, That's all right. All right. Cool beans, Gary. So, you're retired? Are you still yeah. working? Yeah, I work... 54. You got another one of these? Yeah. Huh? I worked 54 and a half years for uh, the telephone company. Okay. Either... Uh, when I started, it was Southern Bell. And then it went to South Central Bell, and then it went to Bell South, and it, then it went to AT&T. Okay. So I spent 54 and a half years. Wow, so that's quite a career with them. Yeah, they, when I started, if you did what you're supposed to do and kept your nose clean, you had a good job. Yeah. You didn't get rich, but you provided for your family. 